So in this dark and shady forest where there's barely enough light to film, at the base of this eucalyptus tree we got a species of mycoheterotrophic plant. So it's a plant that's lost all its chlorophyll because it no longer photosynthesizes, it just steals from fungi that are in the ground, from mycorrhizal fungi in the ground that are associating with the nearby trees. This is a species of Thysmia in a family Bermaniaceae. This is Thysmia rodwayi. Named after some guy named Rob Ah, that light's too shit, apparently. I can't even I can't even get in there to film. There's an old one. Okay, so this is just the flower. There's barely any leaves. You get some bracts at the base of the flower. Uh, and then of course you follow that stem or root of the plant, whatever the shit you want to call it, down into the ground, and it's associated with the fungi. You can see mycelium everywhere. So, uh, this genus, of course, is notorious because uh in the mid-1800s, maybe it was late 1800s, one was found. Oh, look, there's another one over there. Where'd it go? One was found, uh, let me see this guy. Where the fuck? Oh, yeah, there you go. In the mid-1800s, one of these was found uh, growing near Chicago in beautiful Calumet, near Calumet. Uh, and uh, I've actually seen the specimen at the, at the Field Museum. They got an herbarium collection of it. It's extinct now, of course, because uh, Chicago is there. But, uh, you know, that was a weird disjunction because most of this genus is in the Southern Hemisphere and it was the only the only species found in North America uh, and the only time the genus itself has been found in North America. And, it's, uh, it's of course, it's extinct now. But anyway, weird fucking plant. Bromaniaceae, we get a couple uh, members of it in North America. We do not get any thysmias. And again, it's a mycoheterotroph, which quite a few plants do. So it's not—it's a plant that's not parasitizing other plants. It's actually parasitizing fungi. Get the eucalyptus bark sheddings everywhere. Here's an exceptional one right up against this root right here. This shit pollinates these. Some of them that we found were covered by duff. So it's, I mean, there's an old one. The stamens are inside there arranged in a circle uh, on the... Basically, it looks like a little a circular structure, like a ring that's inside that corolla. I've, no one seems to really know what pollinates these things anyways. Got to be upwards of uh, 50 species in the genus Disney. A fucking weird plant. What a cool one. Got it. So we're just hanging out there on the floor of this temperate rainforest. There we go. Now we're high class. We got the light on. Look at those things. Look at that. See that? You go in there. Maybe you're a fungus gnat or something. You're just looking for a meal. And instead, you know, you're helping this thing get pounded. Are the flowers dioecious, monoecious? Hard to tell. Looks like uh, you got a little uh, capsule, a little fruit forming right down there. See that thing got hit already? See that? The flowers withered up top. Just such a bizarre, such a fucking weird, <laughs> such a weirdo. Oh, God. You know, Gondwanan, too. You know, you get Thysmia in Brazil. You get There's a Thysmia in uh, Costa Rica. Just a fucking weird... Yeah, you know, how how old... How how far back does this lineage go? When did it evolve? Bet this thing evolved 70 million years ago. You know, just coming up in the duff. This thing I had to uncover a little bit. It was mostly covered. So whoever's getting in there, maybe it's fungus gnats. Who knows? Maybe it's ants. What's pollinating these things, huh? Look at this. There's that bed fortia, that tree senecio, a tree daisy, tree asteraceae. You see those flowers, those capitula just coming out of that, the, those axles of those leaves. That white indumentum, the fuzzy indumentum on the stems and the uh, abaxial surfaces of the leaves right there. Look at that. Look at the little... Uh, Curly Q styles poking out too. Massive uke right here, Eucalyptus delegatensis. You can see it's got a rough bark until about halfway up and then it gets smooth bark way up there. Way, way up there. You got these massive goddamn tree daisies. Got a bed fortia right there. It's basically a senecio. And then you got the uh, Oliria over here. Look at that. That's, you can't even see. Why am I even showing you this? You can't even see the goddamn leaves. A giant member of the sunflower family. A tree-like member of the sunflower family. And then right here, this yuke is a different species. You can see it's got smooth bark basically almost the whole way up. That's the uh, 
That's the species that's the tallest flowering plant in the world. That's Eucalyptus regnans. Regnans. And that's a young one. They get fucking much, much bigger than that. I grew that from seed once. It hated, it hated California. It was far too dry for it. Here we got a species of tree fern in the genus Dicksonia. Look at it. Look how, look how, look at how fuzzy that bastard is. Look at that. Those fuzzy ass fronds. The circinate vernation. The way that those leaves unfurl from the center of that, uh, from the apex of that plant right there. That soggy forest. Then we got Polystichum proliferum. Because uh, they come with these little bubbles. I don't know, I just knocked one of them off. Where the shit did it go? There we go. So that thing can drop and then uh, root itself into the ground and you get a, you get a new little fern. Look at these hairy bastards. God damn, look at those sorry on there. Look at those. Just dropping spores and of course all those, all those orange trichomes and scales. Scale like trichomes. Standing beneath the giant uh, mountain ash, a, di a giant uh, eucalyptus regnans. Got a nice uh, nothophagus right there, too. Cutting hammy. Cutting hammy eye. Whatever shit. We got a uh, it's really uh, interesting orchid right here. Townsonia viridis. Look at that. Tiny little orchid. And uh, most often, this thing is seen growing out of rotting logs or decaying organic material on the ground. So most likely, it's associating with a fungus that is instrumental in breaking down said substrate and uh, apparently also provides uh, some benefit to this orchid. I'm just, I'm just, uh, this is just conjecture, you know? But, uh, I mean, look at a habitat here. Look at how, this is basically the, the same habitat as the Pacific Northwest. It's a temperate rainforest right here. Look at this tiny little fucking orchid. Look at that. Here, this, this individual at that town, Sony, is a little bit better. You can actually see what's going on. Oh, the light is too faint. Anyway, you can see those yellow pollinia. And at the big, big mahogany labellum. And that, that nice little hood, that dorsal sepal. Do you like that? You like members of the citrus family, Rutaceae, that are called stinkwood? You hear that? Thing that sounds like an owl that's a tawny frog mouth real weird looking bird in the background anyway zearia arborescens is this guy right here look the fruit looks like a thamnosma fruit with that kind of citrus uh you can't tell the light sucks too much for the camera it's, it's too dark like that kind of citrus fruit texture and then there's that uh those flowers four petals with a little paddle shape to the uh the uh bottom of that uh, those those uh, stamens right there. So four petals, and then uh, of course they got the pellucid oil glands and what the shit. They give that uh, foliage such a pungent smell. Right there you got a massive eucalyptus globulus, which is invasive in California, but native here and a very important member of the ecosystem because those roots associate with uh, quite a few different species of mycorrhizal fungi. Nice gania right there as well too. Just the big ass, just the big ass grass, essentially. Big ass graminoid. Yeah, that's all I got. Go fuck yourself. Bye.